You can just say that one con of this bike is you might need to sell your house to buy it. With 130 millimeters of rear travel, 150 millimeter fork, and 29er wheels, we tested the new Yeti SB130 in the trail category. The SB130 replaces the SB4.5, which was introduced in 2016. A water bottle now fits inside the frame. The sizing on these bikes is long. On the medium size that we tested, there's a 460 millimeter reach. The fork has a 44 millimeter offset, which is shorter than the 51 millimeters that we're used to seeing on 29er forks. The SB130 uses Yeti's Switch Infinity suspension design, where there's Kashima coated stanchions that the main pivot slides up and down on. The main pivot actually changes direction as the suspension moves through its travel. We're riding the SRAM X01 Eagle Race model, which comes with a Fox dropper post, carbon cranks, carbon handlebars, and an X01 group set. It retails for $8,199 US dollars. It weighs in at a respectable but not feather light 28.6 pounds in a medium with no pedals. I thought that the geometry of this SV130 made it super easy to climb with. Uh, I was a little bit surprised it has a 460 millimeter reach, which is something that we used to see on size large bikes, not on medium bikes. I felt like I was centered on the bike. Um, the one thing that I did find climbing was that when we got into, you know, technical uh, steep switchbacks, uh, I did feel like it was a lot of bike to maneuver around those corners. The seat tube angle is pretty steep on this bike as well, and so that puts you in a good position, gets you over the pedals so you can get some power down, and it puts you over the front a lot more so you don't have the front end kicking up. Yeah, the one thing that I noticed when climbing was that it felt super light. Uh, we didn't actually weigh the bikes before going out and riding them, and if I'd had to guess, I would have said that the bike was one of the lightest on the test. Roots, rocks, technical trail, whatever, running it wide open is always good. It sits up high in the travel and is well supported the whole way through. So for descending with a long top tube and the slack head tube angle, I really felt confident and in control on the descents. I actually recorded some of my best times on this bike descending. Uh, and I never felt like I was, you know, kind of holding on to the bike, like I was out of control. It really felt comfortable. It does have a really long reach. Bikes with a really long reach make you feel a little bit off the back of the bike or just having trouble controlling it in one way or another. But this bike's really neutral and really balanced. As far as the spec of this bike goes, it's pretty dialed in right out of the box. This bike just cornered really well, it descended really well, it had great traction and felt super light climbing. The one thing to consider if you are looking at buying this bike is that it is a long bike. It has that 460 millimeter reach on the size medium. It might be scary, but it actually rides really well. One thing that you know some people may want to change depending on where they're riding is it does have an aggressor out back um, for the tire. Some people may opt for a DHR. Both of those tires are really good. It's one of the more expensive bikes that we've tested and one of the most expensive completes out there in this range. Overall, the SB130 is an incredibly well-rounded bike. It has a lot of technology and features that really make it stand out from the crowd. I live over on the East Coast in North Carolina. It's a lot of climbing, lots of jagged rocks and slippery routes to get down, and it's something that I would choose for riding there, the Northwest, wherever. If I have one bike that I can choose, it would certainly be near the top of my list. So folks, there you have it, Yeti SB130. Stay tuned for more videos from Pink Bikes Field Test.